There's nothing quite like conceding a 94th minute winner from the opposition's first corner of the game to really shake down the Chelsea ball and get them moving in what needs to be some vital January transfer business. What's happening everyone? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's news video which is regarding mainly transfers. Yes, that's right. Over the last few weeks, there's been a lot of names linked and rumoured to Chelsea Football Club, but I think now Chelsea have really highlighted yet again their problem in breaking down low blocks. I think perhaps when the Chelsea board saw Chelsea win 3-0 at home to Burnley, who are a sort of deep, compact, low block team, they probably thought, hmm, maybe we should hold off this January, like I said in previous videos. But oh no, this loss to Newcastle really does highlight the fact how the same problems remain in Frank Lampard's Chelsea side. So we're going to be talking about a couple of players linked today and also potential solutions. But before, I want to quickly remind you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy. If you've not yet done so, please do subscribe, hit the bell notifications icon. Why not like the video to help me out? Let's get into it. So after that loss to Newcastle, Frank Lampard was understandably annoyed, really annoyed. And he said some stuff to the media afterwards regarding transfers we have problems up top in terms of finishing chances we need to be clinical the nature is we can't work anymore in training we need to score more goals it's what we need to do is what we need to be it's clear I think we need to strengthen he also said on we can't work on finishing anymore we work on finishing all the time in training we can't do it anymore it's now a personnel thing it's a psychological thing it's down to the character in front of goal and maybe that needs changing Lampard continues we are looking to bring people in it's in areas to win games I think it's clear now and what I'm saying I know where we need to strengthen. Mm. Frank Lampard was often coy in talking about this subject. He's like, look, if we can, we will. All this sort of stuff, like maybe we will, maybe we won't. But now he's like, oh God, we need to. So that's good, right? 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 And in classic football media fashion, the story this morning that's re-emerged is, of course, Bundesliga striker Timo Werner, who apparently Chelsea have actually opened negotiations with. The thing is with Werner is would he come in January? No, probably not. Like I've quoted before on this channel, Raphael Honigstein pretty much poured cold water on the concept of him leaving in January. But who knows, maybe there's a chance. Apparently there's a 60 million pound price tag on him, which in terms of his quality is absolutely nothing. But the only thing is Liverpool are now apparently interested. It's an interesting one from Werner's perspective because obviously Liverpool have got Roberto Firmino and indeed Divock Origi, who's a bit of a cult hero out there. But also Chelsea have got Tammy Abraham. But would he take the number one spot off Tammy Abraham? He'd probably be expecting to, and you know what? This might be the reason why Tammy has not signed a new contract. He's literally the only youngster left to not put pen to paper. Ruben, Mount, Reese James, hudson Doy, Tamori, they've all signed new deals except Tammy Abraham. Does he smell something in the air that brings a striker and he's worried about his position? Timo Werner is of course an elite marksman and probably the hottest property in world football I think in terms of an acquisition. Sure you could say someone like Harry Kane would cost a lot more but Timo Werner is a little bit younger. He's top of the scoring charts in the Bundesliga at the moment. He's got more goals than Lewandowski now and three times as many as assists. He's an elite goal scorer essentially. So Timo Werner, certainly probably a target. Chelsea do want to bring in the quality to take them up to the top. If Manchester City can have both Gabriel Jesus and Sergio Aguero, Chelsea should aspire to have two elite strikers too. Now there's something else I want to talk about in this video that I find quite interesting regarding N'Golo Kante and the way Chelsea play with Kante. But before that, I want to quickly shout out to Jeremy Boga, who scored an absolute wonder goal. That's right, Boga, once of Chelsea, played a bit of pre-season under Antonio Conte, and we never saw him again. Jeremy Boga is currently playing out in Serie A for Sassuolo, and apparently Chelsea have a 15 million euro buyback clause. Now, that's not much at all, and he had been playing well, and then he scored this goal, which was a 30-yard screamer, preceded by a little nutmeg before he did it. An absolute wonder goal, like it's, this goal is amazing. And it makes you think if Pedro's gonna be on the way out, this is something that I've said on the channel before a few times, get Boga in. 15 million euros, what's that, like 13, 14 million pounds? Just get him in, it's super cheap. He's obviously had loads of experience out in another country now. He looks superb, just get him in, just bring someone in. 
Still, with Bruce Buck's comments uh, in the pre-match press conference for the Newcastle loss, he did say, I know who we're getting. There isn't, uh, I don't know, like rumours and people have got an inkling that Chelsea have got someone in mind and are indeed bringing someone in. Even if the Timo Werner is a negotiation for the summer, there's an idea that Chelsea are looking to bring in these finishers, someone who can finish Frank Lampard's desperately needed finishers this January. And really, you'd expect Manchester United to lose against Liverpool, even though they could win. They could, they're the only ones to uh, make Liverpool drop points this season domestically. So, you know, Chelsea are counting on that happening to remain five points clear, but they can't keep relying on everyone else being terrible like they are and just sort of floating along. They need to address their own in-house problems and that's finishing in front of goal. But let's talk about N'Golo Kante for a moment. Chelsea's only world-class player, which is widely agreed across the board I guess. But I saw this stat on Twitter that says the win percentage this season with Kante in the team is 36% and the win percentage without Kante in the team this season is 71%. The win percentage is twice as big without Kante in the team than with him in the team. Now does that mean Kante is a bad player? Of course not. Does that mean he's individually playing bad in these games when he's in the team? Not really no. He does moments when he looks really good. The fact of the matter is it's breaking down what's happening on the pitch. Now that's up to Frank Lampard to get him to slot in and that's also up to Kante to make sure he does the right thing on the pitch at the right time. But this is posing the same old question that a lot of people have been asking the last few months of is it worth selling Kante? If you're not going to play a sort of box to box destroyer mopping up all the time, if you're going to play this like direct style of football, do you sell Kante? Is Kante the player of 2016 and 17? Now that's a little bit unfair because he's still amazing and he could offer an elite team his skills. But that Leicester team, the way Conte played with that Chelsea team, to mop up and transition, is that something that the big teams aren't really doing now? And I'm talking about Manchester City and Liverpool. They had Fernandinho helping on transition doing the odd foul, but he wasn't doing a Kante job. And same with Liverpool when Fabinho was playing. He wasn't exactly like Kante. Sure, a big team could do with Kante because he's amazing. You know, PSG would want him. Loads of Real Madrid would still probably really want him because they'd just do the Zidane, everyone express themselves. They would park Kante at the back and get him to mop up on transition. But if the big teams in the Premier League aren't playing like that anymore, it does pose an interesting question to a 28, 29 year old Kante who's starting to get injuries in his career. Do you cash in for 150 million and try and buy players to suit your style of play? I don't know. See, the thing is, I love N'Golo Kante. He's like the sweetest man, super humble, and obviously amazing at football, and would never cause any problems, and has the best work ethic, and makes your team more likable. Why would you ever want to get rid of that guy? The thing is, if he slots in and this win percentage issue turns around, then great, you've got one of the best footballers in the world, and he's playing well in your team. Superb. It's just... Are you going to float along for another 18 months with it not really working, he gets injured again, then you won't really, you sell him for maybe a third of the amount you thought you could? I'm not saying Chelsea should do one thing nor the other, I'm just posing the question because it keeps coming up and up and up, and really it's an interesting subject. To be honest, that doesn't really matter, sure the win percentage thing is peculiar with N'Golo Kante, but the biggest problem for Chelsea at the moment is moving forwards, scoring goals when you have that much possession. I did a sort of ranting, well, ranting by my standards, video on it yesterday of Chelsea's big problem and how their dynamic is failing in this sense. So really, Frank Lampard needs to address it. <sighs> Maybe they'll do better against, you know, playing Arsenal and Tottenham again and these teams that might come out a little bit more against them. But they need to score goals now against low blocks because teams will sit deep against them and they need that player to go and do it. So. You know, whether Jeremy Bogue is the answer, I don't know, even though it's great to have a player that can score from so far out. Timo Werner would certainly help, but would he come in January? Or is there still a player that's yet to arrive behind the scenes that Chelsea know about? And Frank Lampard's getting a bit impatient and he wants him to arrive now. Anyway, what do you guys think? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions and comments on Chelsea's current situation. It doesn't look like necessarily Timo Werner or Jadon Sancho could just arrive in January. So who does Frank Lampard bring in January? People, I don't think a centre-back's a massive, massive problem. Sure, Chelsea looked poor in that final few seconds of that game against Newcastle, 
But really, it's a goal scorer, isn't it? It's a goal scorer in these big games. Someone that does something different. That has the mentality to wriggle through and do something different. So, who does Chelsea turn to? Get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this issue. Remember, if you are new to football therapy, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Why not like the video if you've enjoyed it? Because that helps me out. And why not follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. No one really follows me on Instagram, guys. At Football Yannick. Come on to Instagram, give me a follow, say hello. Oh yeah, go subscribe to Yann's Yard, my second channel, where you can get more and less formal content with me. And if you enjoy that, I'll put the link in the top of the description. So do go subscribe to Yann's Yard. Other than that, guys, that's it from me. I'll keep you guys updated. Swing by football therapy every single day. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living. I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines. I rap through thought. Body bag the verse. Outline the chuck. In my life, seen trouble. Hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger like my pick. Got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle. Bad boy, stay in trouble. I only love this paper. Sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.